scripture before I read. Uh, I just want to, I want to start to lay out the case for what makes Christianity different. What's the baseline things that make you different from the other religions of the world? Well, the quick grace answer is, I touched on this morning, well, we're not a religion, we're a relationship. And while that sounds, that is right and fine, it doesn't fly in the fact that uh, when you stack us up against the other religions of the world, because we're all looking upward, aiming higher, that constitutes a religion. You've acknowledged there's somebody bigger than you, and you're on an upward trajectory to get to know him. Now, we, there's deeper theological connotations than that. But for all intents and purposes, what we're involved in is a religion. We call it Christianity. You can call it whatever you want. The New Testament tends to call it the way uh, after Jesus saying he's the way. But what separates us? It's not morality. Christianity is not necessarily the most moral religion in the world. If you want to judge morality based on whatever standards you come up with, we still don't always meet up with what might be considered socially the highest moral standard. It's not piety. It's not dedication. It's not devotion. You can find people in every religion of the world that are going to be more dedicated and devoted and pious to what they read and what they do and how they worship than any Christian you've ever met in your life. So it's none of the things by which religion get defined. That can't be what separates Christianity from the rest. An easy answer would be Jesus is what separates Christianity from the rest. However, even that answer, every religion has their savior. Every religion has their anointed one. Every religion has that, what might be considered that key central figure of their religion, whomever he or she may be. Every religion has that centerpiece. So even in that argument, Jesus does, and I, this is even hard for this to come out of my mouth, but please handle this contextually. Jesus doesn't make you special as it regards how to define your religion compared to other religions, okay? And so it's not just having Jesus. It's not even sacrifice, because there are other religions of the world in which God has sacrificed even for his adherents. The thing that makes you unique, the thing that separates you, the thing that causes this to be different from everything else, is you and I are crazy enough to believe that our centerpiece resurrected. That's what separates you. It's not just Jesus. It's a risen Jesus. It's not just a dead Jesus. It's not just a cross sacrifice Jesus. Because again, other religions can show you where their God laid stuff down. But to raise up and not only to raise up and resurrect, but to resurrect as an example of the new man on the earth. And in that, you are entirely unique. Because your faith, Christianity, that which we call Christianity, and call it what you will, but our faith doesn't just see God as being a human and dying on the cross as a sacrifice. It sees that moment as the moment where the representative man, stay with me here, where the representative man until that point died at that point. Christianity at its core is not you come to Jesus and die by killing off the stuff about you. Christianity at its core, the Christianity that came out of Pentecost was we conclude his death was your death. That all men died in a one atom so that all men can raise up in another atom. That's Paul's gospel by which we derive Christianity. That one man represented the, the human race and took it to the cross. Took what to the cross? The whole human race. And everything that plagued the human race. Evil and sin judged at Calvary. That God didn't put off judging evil till the end of the world but that God decided to judge evil in the middle of the world. That's unprecedented. Unprecedented. God would judge evil in the middle of time, not at the end of time. In the middle of time, he would put all things into himself and die. And that should and could be the end of the story. And then we go on trying to live up to that example. I'd like to live. He died for me. The least I can do is live for him. How many of you have ever heard that? 
How many of you know that does not have a book, chapter, and verse attached to it? He died for you, the least you can do is live for him. That would be the case if the Christian story stopped and started at the cross. If it stopped in that all man had been judged at Calvary and all of that had been taken care of, then you would owe God a great debt, a debt too far too great for you to pay. We'd spend the rest of the time from the cross on trying to live up to a cross way over our head. You'd climb that mountain and never reach the top of it because what are you possibly going to do to pay God back for judging the sin and the error and the fault and the failure of your life? There's nothing you could possibly do, but it's not the end of the story because the stone rolled away. This sounds like an Easter sermon, doesn't it? The stone rolled away. I don't know why we relegate the resurrection to Easter, by the way, in the church. It's one of the only times you can hear about the tomb being empty in the modern church is go to church on Easter. We ought to hear about that baby all the time. That tomb is empty and it ought to be the centerpiece of who we are because it's the one thing that makes you different than everybody else. Is your nuts enough to believe? (laughs) Yeah, nuts enough to believe that when it rolled away and he came out, you came out. That what makes you who you are is that Jesus came out of the grave and if he represented the body of man on this side of the cross, you're looking this way, so I'll do it over here. Left to right, that's how we like to read, right? If he represented the body of man over here, all of humanity and evil and sin is judged at Calvary, those cross beams of Calvary. Then when the stone rolls away, he resurrects as a new man on the earth over here so that God who reached down into the dust in Genesis and pulled a dirt man out of the ground and then breathed into his nostrils a life-giving spirit and then man takes upon himself the very essence of who God is. He's the only beast of the field that can communicate intelligent thought to his neighbor because that makes him like God. He's the only beast of the field that can speak into his problems, not run, just run from them. Every animal on the planet has the instinct to see a conflict and run. Only a human has the instinct to see a conflict and win. And you got that from your father reaches down into the dirt, pulls you out of the dirt and breathes into you. And then, of course, sin and evil and failure hit the human race. And when God intervenes the second time, he pulls up out of the dirt himself, a man named Jesus. How did he pull him up out of the dirt? That's the, that's the core of the virgin birth argument, is that he didn't take him from the other men. So he pulls a new man up out of the dirt and breathes into him. It's Jesus. It's the Son of God on the planet who then dies on behalf of the fallen first man and raises from the dead. He doesn't just die on behalf of the fallen first man. He dies as the fallen first man and then raises from the dead. And this is where we get this phrase, new creation. This is why it's seriously offensive when you start to talk about being born again. You can tell people you're a Christian, but when you're a born again Christian, they consider you one of the crazies. Why do they consider you one of the crazies? Because you're crazy enough to believe that something happened to you so transformative that you're not who you used to be. That's cuckoo talk in the terms of the world. They go, you mean to tell me you actually believe you're not who you used to be? No, you metaphorically believe it, right? You believe it in theory. No, you go, no, I literally believe that I am not who I used to be because I believe in a new man on the earth who has taken up residence inside of me. And people go, well, that's nuts. Sign me up. I mean, that's, that's what you signed up for. You might have thought you were signing up to go to heaven. You found out this morning you signed up for a whole lot more. Not just a go away. You didn't get in this to get out of this, by the way. You got in this because God needed somebody in this mess. And he'd found a good one when he found you and resurrects you on the earth. And so resurrection then is not only what separates us. Resurrection is what defines us. 